How's it going everybody? It's your boy Satoshi back in the house for another video and let's talk about inflationary versus deflationary cryptocurrencies. So I'm going to cover this article today, talk a little bit about what you should avoid when it comes to projects claiming that they're completely deflationary, how you should be careful when it comes to that and actually understanding what crypto is at this moment because it is still not a perfect hedge to inflation. If you want to watch my hedge to inflation video, you can check it out right here. And let's just get right into it, starting off with, uh, you know, in the US, inflation is at a 40 year high, prices are rising quite fast, and people are looking for alternative things to put their money into, right? Such as real estate, crypto, NFTs, and uh, if you think of something else, drop it in the comments down below. But Bitcoin is actually technically an inflationary asset as well, even though a lot of the time we like to call it deflationary. Over time, the the supply of Bitcoin is increasing, right? Even though there is a halving going on once every few years that reduces the mining reward in half, it's still more tokens, right, coming there. So Ethereum, or sorry, Bitcoin is not completely deflationary. It's not inflationary. It is disflationary. So that means that it gets less and less inflation over time, which is a good concept, but it is not deflation, right? which is also a good thing because deflation can kill economies. You know, in Japan, they've had deflation for quite some time. And I haven't looked at the recent statistics. It was very bad for growth of the economy because when you have deflation, you're not stimulating people to spend money. You're not stimulating people to invest. And the economy just goes down, right? Even though prices are going down and you're thinking, wow, this is a good thing. The economy is going down and it is getting beaten by other economies that are having inflationary policies with a moderate level of inflation because that can increase economic growth and at the same time increase the price level slightly but you know it gets accompanied by an increase in wages and all of these other things so inflation and crypto are two things that will always be talked about and basically inflation means that purchasing power falls over time as uh, you know time passes now central bankers don't think that inflation is always bad because at low stable levels it encourages people to spend and uh, you know stimulate economic growth as i said right now and there is a few negative things about inflation obviously if it's too large and you aren't receiving a proportionately larger salary as prices are increasing well you're screwed right it's not a good thing so what's happening right now in the world well the federal reserve's trying to keep inflation of fiat currencies around two percent this is uh, not succeeding quite yet. Inflation was a lot higher than that due to uh, this pandemic right now, due to a lot of pumping money into the economy and all of these things. But uh, it's being fought right now by rate hikes, which are, you know, they tend to decrease in inflation levels, but also decrease economic growth because people are now with these rate hikes more incentivized to keep their money in the bank because they're getting a larger interest rate on their money right so everybody is stimulated to save money so there's less investments less consumption less uh government uh, there's there's a formula for this but i'm not gonna get into it right now but in general economic growth starts to fall down now when it comes to crypto daos or DAOs are those that actually choose what the level of inflation or deflation will be so a lot of different projects tend to uh, disagree or have their own policies on what they're gonna do now there is a lot of different inflationary cryptocurrencies out there where the number of coins in circulation rises over time that's for example dogecoin which has an unlimited supply after one of its creators abolished this hard cap that they had of 100 billion doge in february 2014 so dogecoin sell it if you have some just sell it it's a meme coin it's just there literally as a meme you know elon musk pumped it and somehow it still retained value but as you can see it has an unlimited supply so you know get out because at some point the supply is going to start increasing because more people are going to start to get in and if supply outpaces demand uh this dogecoin could just simply crash and send everybody out of it now protocol such as bitcoin has disflationary measures which i said or disinflationary measures sorry my bad so the rate of inflation over time is slowed, which is a good thing, as we've concluded before. And we do have deflationary cryptocurrencies as well that implement these token burns, which basically means destroying of tokens. And Binance Coin is one of them because each quarter they're reducing its supply until the token supply hits 100 million BNB. So you could tell that the value of BNB will be increasing over time because every uh, quarter they send x amount of bnb to a wallet that's never going to be in use and that is basically called a token burn so destroying tokens and sending them 
uh, to a wallet that is locked forever and can never be used. And basically it's just taking the coins out of circulation. Now, a lot of projects out there did deflationary, inflationary and disinflationary mechanics at the same time. Um, it's funny how this Coinbase article or sorry, Coindesk article mentions Terra, uh, you know, the stable coin that crashed miraculously. And uh, they actually implemented both burns and minting tokens to maintain a price of one dollar because they had to keep pegged with the dollar. And, you know, at the end of the day, that didn't work out. But um, a lot of other projects out there are burning tokens instead of handing them to miners, for example, Ethereum, um, XRP or Ripple uh burns tokens to pay for transactions and you know a lot of different daos are trying to influence these rates and ways that their token is working to find the most how should i say this efficient way to uh you know make an ecosystem where the token value can be deflationary over time or have a moderate level of inflation over time same as the goal with regular currencies out there except in this case we don't have a middleman we don't have a central authority or a central bank. We simply have a DAO or a decentralized group of peers who are going to decide on the level of inflation together. So that's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel, drop a comment down below if you have any questions and I will see you all in the next one.